Today we are going to talk about spina bifida. Spina bifida is Latin for split spine. It is a type of neural tube defect also known as NTD. In spina bifida, there is an incomplete closing of the spine and membranes around the spinal cord. Spina bifida is one of the most common types of neural tube defects. So what is a neural tube? In a normal embryo, neural tube closure is completed during one month of pregnancy. Neural tube defect occurs when the neural tube does not close properly. Therefore, spina bifida is due to the neural tube defect during the third and fourth week in the development of pregnancy. There are two types in spina bifida, namely spina bifida occulta and spina bifida cystica. Occulta is Latin for hidden. Spina bifida occulta is the mildest form of spina bifida. In spina bifida cystica, a cyst including spinal fluid protrudes from between the vertebrae. It is further divided into meningocele and myelomeningocele according to the components in the cyst. Usually when people say spina bifida, they mean about myelomeningocele, which is the most severe type. So these are the three main types of spina bifida. Before we see further, let's review the structure around the spinal cord. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. They are protected by the three layers of membranes called the meninges. The layers are the dura meta, the arachnoid meta, and the pia meta. The cerebrospinal fluid is located in the subarachnoid space between the arachnoid meta and the pia meta. The spinal cord is further protected by the spinal column, which is made up of vertebrae. Now, we are going to talk about spina bifida occulta. Again, occulta means hidden in Latin. This is the mildest type of spina bifida. In spina bifida occulta, the spinal cord and meninges are normal. The nerves are not damaged, but the spine of the baby is not fully formed during the pregnancy. The skin around the lesion may be normal, or a patch of hairs, a dimple, a dark mark, or a swelling may be seen around the base of the spine in the lower back. Now, let's see about meningocele, which is a type of spina bifida cystica. From the name, you can note that it has something to do with the cyst. Meningocele is the least common form of spina bifida. In this type, the developmental defect allows the meninges to protrude from between the vertebrae and form a sac. However, the nerves of the spinal cord remains intact. Also from the name, you can imagine that it's the meninges that herniates, but not the nerves. The sac includes the spinal fluid. Meningocele is not likely to cause long-term damages to your health as the nerves remain undamaged. Just like other types of spina bifida, meningocele usually occurs on the lower back. But it may also be seen at the skull base or the top of spine. Herniation of the meninges into the nasal cavities due to a bone defect in the base of the skull is known as nasal meningocele. It is usually congenital, but in adults it may be due to trauma or surgery. It may sometimes be misdiagnosed with nasal polyps due to similar appearance. It may be treated with an endoscopic endonasal approach, which is a minimally invasive technique involving inserting an endoscope inside the nasal cavity to resect the sac and reconstruct the defects in the skull. The last one remaining is myelomeningocele. This is the most severe form in the types of spina bifida. In myelomeningocele, the meninges and the spinal cord protrudes from between the vertebrae. You can also imagine that the spinal cord is involved from the name. So this time, the sac includes the spinal fluid, meninges, and the nerves, thus becoming the most severe form in the three that I introduced. The symptoms of myelomeningocele includes lack or loss of bladder or bowel control, paralysis of the legs, which means feeling of tingling and needles in your legs. You may also see weakness or loss of sensation in legs and feet below the lesion. And finally, you may see club foot, which means abnormal or twisted legs, just like in the picture. Now we will go through the complications seen in the meningocele and the myelomeningocele, which are also known as spina bifida cystica. It may be associated with cherry malformation, which I'm gonna talk about in the next video. Also, due to the obstruction of the flow of cerebrospinal fluid out of the brain, it may cause hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a condition of excess cerebrospinal fluid within the brain. You may also see tethered cord. Tethered cord is when the spinal cord is attached to a scar tissue or a lesion, resulting in the spinal cord unable to move freely inside the spinal column, which may cause shooting pains in the legs, numbness or weakness of the limb, etc. 
Around 70% of the people with spina bifida has latex allergies, which imposes problems due to the common use of latex in medical facilities. You may also see the learning problems, but they are relatively uncommon compared to the above complications. The risk factors of spina bifida includes folate deficiency, certain types of medications, diabetes, obesity, and family history of neural tube defects. The treatment is usually by surgery. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be sure to make videos regularly, so if you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button over there for the upcoming contents. See you in the next video. Bye!